Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm technically not a technician, and in today's video, we'll be reviewing the basics of MAME in regards to arcade emulation. At the end of this video, you will be able to walk through the basic features and functions of MAME. You'll also be familiar with arcade emulation and how to start an arcade game with MAME on your Windows PC. This video is for educational purposes only and is only intended to show you what I've done and what my results are. If you choose to modify your systems using this or any other information I've provided from any videos or content I've created, you do so at your own risk. I, this channel, or any person connected to this video will not be held liable for any choices you make with your hardware or software. Modify at your own risk, use caution and proceed responsibly. There are some prerequisites that must be met before we're able to move forward. We'll start with the version of MAME that we'll be using. For this video, we'll be using the current MAME build, and as MAME gets updated often, the version I am using will almost certainly be different from the one you are using. As of making this video, the current version of MAME is 0.261. Because the MAME app or program is version 0.261, we'll need to match our ROM set of MAME games to this version of MAME. The important takeaway from this is that you will need to make sure that the version of MAME that you're running and the version of ROM set you are using are the same. For this guide, I don't wish to get into the details of different MAME versions or MAME ROM sets, and I'll assume that you have a ROM set that matches the version of MAME that you've downloaded. I'll also not be pointing to ROMs in this video. However, I will point you to a video that I think shows the fastest and easiest way to get ROMs for the version of MAME that you're running. So if you're looking for a ROM set to match your main version, please check out these time-saving tools that can help you download a complete set. I may not be linking to ROMs. However, I will be linking to the main dev website in the description. And I'll be walking you through downloading and the basic setup of the main program. For this video, we'll again be downloading the current version of main. And I'll be making sure that I download the 64-bit Windows version. This version of MAME best meets my needs. However, if you use the Apple or Linux ecosystems, then do not worry, as MAME has you covered for those as well. Regardless of the operating system you choose to use, download MAME and let's get started. Once the MAME executable is downloaded, open the installer and your default zip utility should open to extract the MAME program. My default zip utility is 7-zip. I like 7-zip as it is powerful and free. But please feel free to use whatever zip utility you wish, because the MAME download comes to us as an auto extractor in an executable format. We'll get a warning when opening this installer in Windows. Simply click on the Run Anyway option to continue with the installation, and when prompted, tell the installer where you would like your copy to go. For this video, we'll be placing a folder on the root of the C drive called MAME 0.261. I do recommend that you put the MAME version in the folder name, as this can help you identify what version of MAME you are using. And this can be helpful when rebuilding MAME ROM sets in the future. Once MAME is done extracting itself, open your MAME folder and let's take a look around. When opened, we find some folders and a ton of files. Right now, we need to check out three of those folders. The first is titled Samples, the second is called ROMs, and the last is Artwork. I believe most of us in YouTube land know that the ROMs folder is the area where we place our arcade ROMs and chud files. However, the samples folder is also important, as it is used with your game ROMs for external sounds like a bell or a horn. I also understand that some of the original sounds may have copyright issues, and replacement sounds have been added. The artwork folder, well just as the name says, holds artwork. Some of this art is a must for games like Asteroids and Asteroids Deluxe. Regardless, do you need to populate the samples and artwork folder with the correct files to play the games? Well, no, you do not. However, if you want all the games to work as intended, then yes, you do need to populate the samples folder. Regardless of what you choose, know that I will be adding those files. And if you do not, then I will be secretly judging you and your life choices. Just kidding, my friends. I'll not be judging you. However, I do want to point out that the important thing to take away from this section is that you'll need to populate the ROMs folder with ROM and CHUD files, and populating the samples and art folders is helpful. 
but even if you do not populate the samples and artwork folder, your games will still load. Once you've downloaded all the aforementioned files, be sure to populate each folder, being sure to place the art in the artwork folder, the ROMs and CHUT files in the ROMs folder, and the sample files in the sample folder. If done right, and once all of the ROM and CHUT files are in place, MAME should have everything it needs to boot any full arcade ROM it now has possession of. Let's open MAME, take a look around, familiarize ourselves with the layout, and build an understanding of what to expect and how to navigate MAME. Once MAME is open, you'll be given a DOS-style menu that can only be described as looking like something from outdated retail tracking software that you'd find on an old cash register you would use at a discount department store. Regardless, there are five sections that you'll want to understand on this opening menu, so you can use MAME and know what MAME is trying to tell you. The first section I want to speak about isn't really a menu, but more of a display that has important information. This is at the very bottom and is kind of like a traffic light in relation to how well a game ROM works within a program. I think it's important to note what I just said here. Green means that it can run OK in MAME if your hardware has the power. Yellow means it runs OK. However, it will have emulation issues, and if it's showing red, that means MAME doesn't emulate this arcade well at all, regardless of the hardware used. It's important to note that some newer games that MAME can emulate and show as green will still require powerful hardware to emulate. In short, the newer and more powerful the hardware you have, the smoother the emulation and gameplay. We'll now move to the right side section, under the image and info tab. For now, I only wish to speak about the info tab, and as its name suggests, you'll find info regarding the current arcade ROM you have selected. In this information section, you'll find important information about this game. You'll learn if the ROM is the parent or if it's a clone, how well the game is working, and if the ROM is mechanical. Or does the game require artwork, shut files, or other items to work as intended? Let's now move to the largest section in the center of the screen. And here we'll find a list of ROM names. This is the menu that we'll use to select and launch a game. Basically, when in this menu, you'll be able to use your arrow keys to navigate up and down. And you can launch a game once the ROM is selected by pressing the Enter key. You should also understand that what you see in the ROM menu will be reflective of the selection you have made in the left side menu. Both of these menus work together, and by default, you can move from menu to menu using the tab key on your keyboard or by using a mouse and clicking on the highlighted section. MAME also gives you the option to type directly into the search field. So, if you know the name of your ROM, you can go directly to your preferred game. We should now speak about the left side menu. This menu helps us populate our center menu with ROM selections. As you can see, the first option is in filter, and just as it states, if selected, the ROMs in the center ROM list will be a totally unfiltered list of ROMs. This is not helpful to the casual user. The very next option is titled available. Again, as the name states, this will give you a list of the available ROMs. However, not all of the ROMs will be working. I should also stop and explain that by working, what is meant is that MAME can play the game if your hardware is able to do so and if you've got all the right ROM files. The next area is titled Working, and here you will find all of the listed working ROMs. Keep in mind that if you're downloading source MAME ROMs that have not been managed, you'll likely also find ROMs from items not needed, like the mechanical claw games. Regardless, if a ROM is marked as working, then you'll find it here. I'm going to skip over the sections marked as not working and the selections for mechanical and not mechanical. I feel like they're self-explanatory. In fact, we'll skip all the way down to the CHUT sections. Here you'll find ROMs that require CHUT files and some that do not require them. I point this out, as some CHUT files are large and can be a pain in the ass to download. I recommend only downloading the CHUT files that you need for the games you plan on playing. Please remember that MAME is a large project with the goal of preserving games, not just emulation, and many of the CHUDs have nothing to do with arcades. The important takeaway here is to save yourself some time and only download the needed CHUD files for the games that work and that you plan on playing. I've no idea if this is true but I've read that CHUD stands for chunks of huge data. Again, I have no idea if that is true, but I do know that a CHUD file is an image of a hard disk of some kind, 
like a hard drive or a game disk. If you try to launch a ROM that has missing files, like a CHUD file, MAME will tell you that you're missing files and even tell you what file or files you're missing. If you're missing CHUD files, simply do a fast Google search and you should find all the files you need. When adding CHUD files, it's important to know that they'll need to be placed inside a folder that is named the same as the ROM. For example, because Area 51 requires CHUD files, we'll take the CHUDs for that game and add them to our ROMs folder under a subfolder with the same name as the Area 51 ROM. Once this is done, we'll be able to launch Area 51 and emulate the game as expected. MAME lets you access the arcade using the keyboard, and by default, you can add a coin and press the player ready buttons by using the number 5 and 1 keys. Also, your joystick will be configured using the arrow keys. If you recall earlier in this video, I told you that when you're in the main display, you can navigate from menu to menu by hitting the tab key. However, when you actively have a ROM working, you can press the tab key and a sub menu will open, giving you access to game ROM options and settings. Let's take a second and expand on this section, as configuring your controls is very important when emulating. When a machine is open in MAME, if you press the tab key, you will get the following menu, and I'd like to speak about the input settings option. This option does just what it says. It lets you configure the inputs or controls for the loaded machine. After selecting the input settings option, we'll be given another menu, and this menu will have two important selections. Both are known as input assignments, but the top menu referred to in this menu as this system differentiates them by being particular to the loaded machine. Our next option is referred to as general and is really intended to give the user a way to get a basic controller setup that can work as a base for most of the machines. Because of the nature of arcade and machine emulation and the fact that, for the most part, the controls can be so different between each, it is difficult, if not impossible, to build a default controller profile that will work on all of the arcade ROMs. If we enter the input assignments section under this system, We'll be shown the input options for the controls on this cab. Because Pac-Man is loaded and because it is a two-player game, we have options for Player 1 and Player 2. At the moment, on the keyboard, Player 1 is configured to use the keyboard arrow keys to move. Number 1 is the Player 1 start, and Number 5 is the Player 1 coin. However, Player 2 is using the R, F, D, and G to move up, down, left, and right, and Number 2 as the Player 2 start and number 6 as the player 2 coin. It's important to keep in mind that you can change any of these options by selecting the option, pressing the enter key, and then selecting the replacement keyboard key. If you want to delete a selection, simply highlight the selection and press the delete key on your keyboard. It is also important to note that all of these keyboard bindings are set up for you by default. And if you ever would like to know how a ROM is configured so you can play it, you simply need to look here. Next, let's take a look at using a controller. For this video, I'll be breaking out an old school Xbox controller. Any controller should work. However, I wanted to use something you may have lying around and unused. New controllers will work fine. And if you'd like to know what each of your buttons on your controller are mapped as, or if you'd like to test your controller out, your Windows OS gives you an option to do so. All you need to do is open the USB Game Controller tool, and it will report to you how Windows sees each button. When Windows has a game controller connected and you open MAME at the same time, MAME will see that you have a controller connected, and it will automatically configure the connected controller. For the most part, and for most games, you should be ready to play. Most people's largest hurdle is understanding how to play a game. I simply recommend googling images of the arcade control deck. Just because MAME auto configures your controller doesn't mean you can't make changes to your system if you need to. If the need arises, you'll simply do as you did with the keyboard. Again, with the arcade cabs ROM loaded into MAME, press the tab key and a menu will open. Enter the input assignment section, where it's marked as this system, and when you've selected the button you wish to edit, simply hit enter on your keyboard or hit the action key on your controller that corresponds to the Joy 1 button. Once done, press the button on your controller that you'd like to use for that action. For today's video, I've only got one controller connected, as I travel in large groups of one. However, you may be a cooler person and have friends to hang with. 
If you do have friends because you're cool and you've got a second controller, then the Player 2 configurations would also automatically populate. Because we have a controller connected and assigned to Joy 1, you can see that the D-pad has been assigned to your joystick for direction. The Player Start has been assigned to the Start button on your controller, and the Player 1 Coin button is now the Controller Back button. In short, you should now be able to load and play most games with something as basic as a keyboard and mouse or as comfortable as a game controller. MAME can emulate a lot. In fact, as discussed, MAME emulates so many arcades that you can't get a perfect default controller configuration. However, MAME comes close, and for the most part, we really only have issues with driving, shooters, and other specialty controls. I do hope that you found this video helpful. Please make sure that you subscribe, as in the future I'd like to expand on this video. We've really only covered the basics, but remember that you can do a ton more, like upscaling, setting settings that can help your game run better, or even adding scan lines and changing video drivers for better gameplay. MAME is kind of a large project, and it really needs more than one video. Regardless, I hope you took something helpful away from this video, and if you did, Please show your support by liking this video, leaving me a comment, and sharing this video with someone who may find it helpful. If you haven't, please consider subscribing. These are all small clicks of the mouse for you, but to this small channel, your small clicks mean the world. Thank you.